Why has the world become so fascinated with ayahuasca? Very good question. My name is Howard Lawler. I grew up in the uh, rural areas of Kentucky in North America. My interest in shamanism began very early in my life as a child. My grandmother was a renowned healer and I was known in those parts as a Kentucky root doctor. Of course, when I was a child, I had no uh, knowledge of shamanism per se, but uh, my grandmother would tell me stories of how she learned about medicinal plants from her grandmother, uh, who was a full-blood Cherokee Shawnee, Native American. So that inspired a keen interest in Native American culture. The first sacred plant that I came in contact with was peyote in the Native American church tradition. Uh, that's where I began my practice and my relationship with the sacred plants. In the early 90s, I had the opportunity to come to Peru and that opened a door to uh, engage another modality of, of uh, core shamanism, which is the Amazonian practices involving ayahuasca. My first mission in my connection with ayahuasca was actually for my own personal healing of uh, acute chronic depression, which I'd fallen into a few years prior to that period of time which produced amazing results, essentially healing my depression in the course of just a few ceremonies. And through that, I saw the huge potential of this to help a lot of people. So uh, in 1995, I established the um, Ayahuasca Spirit Quest Healing and Higher Consciousness Program here in the Amazon. It was at that time one of only three organized opportunities for that kind of connection available here. The topic of ayahuasca has unfolded dramatically, exponentially indeed, in the past five to 10 years. Uh, prior to that, there was a very small uh, base of interest in esoteric circles, but generally it was unknown to the Western world. Ayahuasca is a traditional plant medicine originating in the Amazon. Uh, it is a holistic medicine that has many healing applications dealing with psychological, physical, emotional, and spiritual uh, illnesses and conditions. <clears throat> Ayahuasca certainly has healing properties that directly affect a rather wide range of conditions that are not effectively treated by Western medicine. Ayahuasca is perhaps the most effective treatment for depression because it addresses that condition on both a um, biochemical, physiological, and psychological level. And in many cases, people having suffered depression for long periods of time uh, after working with ayahuasca find that they do not go back to those feelings and they experience a, a permanent relief. Same is true for anxiety issues, phobias of various types, irrational fears of, of things stress and trauma disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, and things of this nature. There are many, many accounts of remissions of various types of cancer following uh, work with ayahuasca, uh, usually in a, in a more uh, extensive manner. Probably the, the most profound uh, improvements in, in uh, physical conditions that we've seen in our work are uh, with people with uh, Parkinson's disease and multiple sclerosis. Neurophysiological disorders in general seem to be improved rather quickly, at least symptomatically, through even short-term medication with ayahuasca.
what brought me here to Peru for ayahuasca was really just a short experience I had back in the States about a year and a half ago um, with DMT. It was a very uh, opening experience and helped me realize that the things that I struggle with aren't who I am and that they can be washed away with a little bit of work and I had a ferocious appetite of learning more about ayahuasca and what it was after that. I've been dealing with depression for most of my life, ever since I was around 12 years old. And I don't know, nothing's worked. I mean, I've dealt with so many things and tried so many meds and different kinds of therapy and, you know, it's still very unhappy. And ayahuasca seems to have a good track record at helping people deal with things like depression and post-traumatic stress disorder and things I've had to deal with. So it seemed like it was worth giving a try. I first heard about ayahuasca from my best friend who got a fair bit into spirituality, um, discovering more about himself, and in turn I was trying to discover a bit more about myself. When he showed me a documentary on ayahuasca, I was very intrigued about how it helped so many people with so many issues, and it, it led me here. Most people have a tendency to think of um, pleasant experiences as good experiences and difficult, challenging, or hard experiences as bad, as bad experiences. Uh, when working with ayahuasca, that, uh, those criteria are not really, uh, not really legitimate simply because uh, the very nature of ayahuasca is to bring up things that people would otherwise tend to avoid dealing with. And uh, this is the, one of the greatest attributes of ayahuasca from the standpoint of uh, personal auto-psychoanalysis, as it were, enabling those issues to come up, to come to the surface uh, so that they can be um, uh, confronted, addressed, and uh, hopefully resolved in the conscious mind, or at least that process initiated. Very often, these processes of confrontation are very uh, unpleasant, very difficult, very challenging. In reality, those experiences tend to be the most beneficial in the long run, providing the person is able to allow the process to run its course, uh, to allow those things to come up, uh, to engage in the hard work of processing that, uh, uh, those revelations or those confrontations. Ayahuasca is an opener. Ayahuasca is a potentiator. It uh, brings things to the surface that remain, uh, that are often otherwise deeply submerged in the subconscious. It's hard, hard work. <laughs> People don't come out here to uh, do this for fun. Um, it's been pretty grueling uh, with some experiences. Uh, you really get your butt kicked and you learn really quickly to fight, you know, or to resist, um, to overanalyze, to overthink, really um, does a disservice to you. In my experience, the more you can live in your heart and uh, live through your soul, live through your nature, that's when you really start to figure out what you know life's about. This will actually be my second time doing ayahuasca. This experience this year has been so much more rewarding, so much deeper for me. It's been a gift, you know, really, to um, come a long way and really know to let go, you know, and follow your heart. It sounds so cliche, but it's so true. A lot of the ceremonies, even at their hardest, were just terrific. Because either you fly and you have just a very good experience that makes you feel good, perhaps you might have visions. A lot of times that can be really difficult. But even the hard, hard ceremonies where you're suffering a lot of it, when you become aware enough, you realize the beauty and your plight and the beauty and the plight of, of all of us. And it's not to say we can't improve and make each other's lives better. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that or suggesting that. I'm just saying there's so much opportunity for growth and every hardship, every trouble we have is really just a blessing in disguise. And that's just the other dimension to, um, to life. And I would not have that 
had I not been, you know, to Peru the first time and this time. So it's just been mm, incredible. Sometimes when you're in your rut, you know, whatever it is, you think you're alone, you think you've got it the worst, you think no one would understand. And in this process, you know, in these ceremonies and these talking circles afterwards, you realize that everybody's having a, a similar fight on a fundamental level. And it's just um, profound. When one comes to work with ayahuasca, an appropriate amount of preparation, training and guidance is extremely uh, helpful, beneficial, indeed for most people essential, in order to, uh, uh, to be prepared for some of the uh, surprises that ayahuasca often brings to help people um, diminish expectations that are unwarranted. And there's a tendency often for people to expect or desire ayahuasca to be what they want it to be rather than being uh, capable of surrendering to it and allowing it to work as it naturally does. The preparation must focus perhaps first and foremost on intention. That is to say, the reasons why a person wants to uh, undertake the process. It's important to understand that work with ayahuasca is a process and not a singular event. All of the benefits of ayahuasca cannot be realized in a single, in a single session or, in many cases, even a single cycle of work. I am actually hopeful that, you know, when I get back, I'll be able to do what needs to be done to get to the next step, to be happy again. She, she made it very clear. She's like, I can't take you there, but I can show you the way. And she did a very good job of that the other night. I don't know, and, and the nice thing is she gave me the, you know, several hours of what the finish line is, you know, she, so I know what I'm aiming for. I know what, I know why it's worth it. She just show me infinite love and that's the word that just came came up over and over again in the experience of it i mean it's beyond words obviously but just the space of infinite love and anything else is crap there's just everything else is just a distraction from that infinite space that we all live in that we just forgot about and anytime i started to lose it a little bit she'd take me right back to it just like to hammer it home just this is what you're going for this is what it's all about i mean this i mean i would never say that this work is for any everyone it's not easy nobody it's not a, a fun experience and you definitely have to be prepared for it i think like it took me 10 years to get to the point where i felt comfortable trying it because it can be terrifying it can be infinitely frustrating the first few attempts were very frustrating for me but i just kept with it and and there was always a, a, an insight you would get. And for me, it was in the sharing circle the next day when I'd listen to other people talk. And it wouldn't necessarily be their experiences, but something about being in that shared space, I would start to process what I learned from the night before, even if it felt like nothing at the time. I would be able to go into the next ceremony with a new perspective. And the next ceremony would get something more, and I'd use that. And then, boom, <laughs> it just the one night, just out of nowhere, it was all there. As far as people who would think it's hippy-dippy, all roads lead to Rome, so to speak. So as long as people are ready, they'll find the way. In one's work with ayahuasca, there are two principal phases of the work. Um, three, if you consider the pre preliminary preparation. The second phase, of course, is the intensive phase. The intensive phase is the, uh, uh, the ceremonial experience, the experience one has when one partakes of ayahuasca. So the third phase of one's relationship with ayahuasca is actually the most important phase of the three. And that's the phase we call integration. And uh, integration is the processing and the realization of what one has received in the intensive phase. 
and integration is an open-ended process. Uh, often the benefits are not immediately evident, and in many cases it will initiate a healing process that will unfold step by step and eventually lead one to resolution of those uh, physical or psychological conditions or awaken one to certain realities that perhaps they have uh, not been aware of up to that point. Pretty much all my life, as long as I could pretty much consciously remember, I've had, I've dealt with anxiety, high, high anxiety. And uh, it, in a way, it's forced me to become someone who I'm not. It's forced me to become emotionless, I guess you could say. Bottled up a lot of things because it was just too hard to face. I, would, I wouldn't go to parties and stuff like that. It really led me to, to discovering more about myself. I'd always found excuses like work. I used marijuana as a crutch. And even in relationships, I would use that as a, another excuse. I was using their happiness to really feel mine. And it wasn't, I wasn't being true to myself. I wasn't being true to them. It's incredible what 10 days has done to that. I mean, an entire lifetime of dealing with it and you know, the talking circles that we've had here have been a major part in that, not just the ayahuasca, not just the medicine. This whole place has had an effect on me that I would never have imagined. For me personally, I mean, it's helped me see my family and friends, more so, more so some family members who I've had a tough time appreciating. Uh, it's really shone a light on that. In one of my ceremonies, I saw each member of my family, all their faces, they came to me in a vision and it was just like, oh, I love you so much. I have so much appreciation for everything you've done for me and I would never have felt that before. I know I've got a lot more healing to do. I know I need to open my heart a lot more and uh, I'm not there yet but I've been shown the way and yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to more progress. I'll let all this sink in and when I go back home, I'm going to give all my family the biggest hug. There is a serious question about the future of ayahuasca availability. As uh, consumption of ayahuasca increases here in the Peruvian Amazon, uh, it's also expanding exponentially all over the world and uh, many, many, many tons of ayahuasca are exported every year from Peru, from other South American countries, source countries. There are a number of, of organizations and individuals who are actively involved in the um, cultivation and propagation of ayahuasca and ayahuasca companion plants such as chacruna, yahe, to try to offset this growing demand and consumption. Uh, this is extremely good. Uh, it must be encouraged. Certainly, anyone using ayahuasca on a regular basis should be doing something to um, propagate or sustain their own consumptive needs or use of the, of the plants. common reference in the context of work with ayahuasca is the purge. The purge simply represents a cleansing or a purification process. Purging can involve virtually any kind of, of a clearing or elimination process that's either physical, emotional, or energetic in nature. The physical aspects of purging with ayahuasca usually involve vomiting, throwing up, uh, but many people in the course of an ayahuasca ceremony, engaging in a purging process, experience that as an elimination of negativity, toxicity, and harmful energy that is lodged in their being. And so they have a feeling that all of that is coming up and coming out in the course of that physical purging. Purging may occur as crying, 
uh, or uh, some other emotional release. Sometimes it involves defecation. The purification process is really the essential first step in forming one's deeper connection with ayahuasca. A person may come to ayahuasca in a relatively impure state and have an exciting, entertaining, or even highly visual experience uh, that they might find uh, personally gratifying or rewarding in the short term. But the deeper long-term benefits require that purification process and deeper connection that penetrates to the very core of one's soul, if you will. And if that penetration occurs successfully, there is usually a transformation involved which changes the goal or motive of the person for their lives. It creates a, a more profound, more thoughtful objective for their life. The Amazonian curanderos with whom I work are uh, Don Robert Acho Arama, uh, Don Yeliana is his wife, Don Carlos is his son, Don Carlos is a third generation curandero in his family lineage. I've worked with Don Rover for uh, almost 13 years now, and uh, Don Rover's experience is very rich. He began his work with um, ayahuasca when he was 11 years old. He was trained by his uncle and his grandfather and uh, he began to conduct ceremonies on his own when he was 18 years old after an apprenticeship of seven years, uh, which is about average for most, uh, most curanderos who come up in, in, within the culture and undergo a, a shamanic apprenticeship at some point in their lives. Not all start that early, some a little later, but the amount of time required to attain competence, skill, and sufficient knowledge to administer ayahuasca is six to eight, six to eight years of training. The reference to shamanism is a relatively newly introduced term that 20, 30 years ago was rarely heard here in the Amazon. That's been largely imported by Western influences. People here now recognize that what they do is a form of shamanism, but in their own minds, they generally think of it in other terms. In the end of the year 2010, I'd like to make a yoga teacher training. At the day when I would transfer the money to the yoga training, I went in the internet and I found a picture from a jaguar uh, behind the leaf and I clicked on the picture and then I came to the website from Howard and four weeks later I was here. What brought me to ayahuasca was to break this cycle of insanity. Um, doing the same thing and expecting different results. Working through past traumas, I needed a way to, to release, to cleanse myself, cleanse my soul. And it, it suffered with my relationship at the time and with connection with people. So that's what I needed to change. What brought me to ayahuasca, really, I, I can't pinpoint it directly. It was, um, I was working on a, I was doing writing in my spare time a lot of things I wrote about led to consciousness and shamanism and I decided to explore these things in research and at the time I was going through a marriage breakup so I had a lot of time to myself to look inward and I, I didn't want to be sort of that person that I was so that led me down the rabbit hole of finding out more. There are really two kinds of people interested in ayahuasca in the broad category. The primary category would be genuine seekers. The other broad category is more centered in um, curiosity or thrill seeking. Increasingly, I see more people coming to Iquitos without real intentions for their connection with ayahuasca. Uh, what this has caused is a change in attitudes, not only among the Western people, uh, but also in the uh, local culture as well. Uh, Fifteen years ago, the few people who came here interested in ayahuasca tended to fit the former category of seeker, of healing or spiritual realization. Now, people here in the uh, Amazon 
are increasingly aware that many people come for other reasons as well. And uh, this has changed their attitude and perspective on the nature of the Western mentality. I think they probably respect it a little less in general, uh, but they also see opportunities for themselves economically and otherwise, so there's a very mixed response. Well, of course, ayahuasca is endemic to the Amazonian region of South America. It has a very deep cultural history, going back most likely thousands of years. Western influence has a very poor track record in its discovery of indigenous practices, particularly shamanic practices, and the subsequent appropriation of the uh, knowledge and the resources the important thing for people to bring to this work if one comes to the Amazon to engage the medicine and to engage the traditional practices surrounding it is to bring sensitivity, to bring respect, to understand that one is not coming into this culture from a position or a stance of superiority, to understand that uh, people of Western birth and heritage have as much to gain, as much to learn from people and the culture and practices in this culture as this culture has to learn from them to understand that there is a reciprocity. For everything that is received, something should be given. To realize that they are uh, bringing potential benefits, but they are also bringing potentially harmful influences as well. To be aware of that, to be sensitive to that, and to try to help preserve the, the foundations of this culture and these cultural practices as, as purely as possible for as long as possible recognizing that all forms of transcultural contact inevitably produce change. When I was here for my first time, I had no idea what's coming up. I had no expectations. I, I only knew that ayahuasca is a great healer and a great medicine. My first experience was very special. I will never forget that day. The medicine put me on an inner journey and he showed me the things inside. They are not clean. They were like rooms and I opened the rooms and I saw a lot of trash in the rooms. And over the years we cleaned all the rooms up. It's now my seventh time here. I drank ayahuasca nearly 60 times. When you take a medicine, it's very important to have the right set in the right setting. Medicines usually act local and medicine here is a local medicine from the Amazon. From my own experience, it is very, very important to have the jungle, to have the environment of the plants around Ayahuasca to be in the jungle and not in a, in a city or in a country where there is no rainforest. You can do that, it works but it's not an optimum. Howard and Don Robert offer us the opportunity to get real traditional healing, to learn real traditional medicine. Because here, like I experienced, you can see where is the plant from, you cut the plant, you grow the plant, you cook the plant, how it is cooked. The whole process, it's very transparent. For me, it's better to come here to support people like we do when we are here, we watch different tribes and we support them. We create connections to heart, to the people here, and to see, oh, cool, open-hearted people, also in a Western world. For me, it's better than to bring the medicine to Europe. For me, it's the biggest changes that happened is a, for me, it's an inner transformation. It's about how do we deal with life? How, how does life affect us? Different situations. I learned to stay in the middle, to go in uh, positions like an observer, stay calm and discover inner peace. In the first ceremonies, I had a lot, about, a lot, a lot of healing about my past, my mistakes, about forgiveness, about self-love, how to love each other, and after that it comes the learning. It's about listening, listening to the medicine, 
listening to yourself. It's all inside us. Medicine helps us to reveal that, to open yourself up because your teacher is inside of you. This lesson I can, le I can learn every day at home and I can integrate that. And when I integrate it, these lessons, I will come back. But not before. Work with the sacred plants often brings people to a point of, of questioning virtually everything that they assume to be absolute or true up to that point is an opening of the possibilities uh, in their lives that they had not considered before. You know, this is a path for the true truth seeker, revealing, helping us to understand where we've been, where we're coming from in our lives and in our deeper spiritual journey, where we are now in the present. And uh, perhaps by uh, understanding those two points, having a sense of our destiny and where we go from here. The medicine is good because sometimes you get lessons in ways you never expect. Sometimes it seems too tough and too strong, but I know that medicine only gives you what you can handle, no more, no less. And if you think you can't handle it, it's the ego talking that wants to protect you and not allow the medicine to work. Last year was my first time. I came last January and my intention for coming was to open my heart and connect with my emotions again. She showed me herself in this Native American form, which is very, very beautiful and powerful. It brought me to this door of light and there was this big warrior, half man, half beast, just blocking the way. And I didn't know at the time whether it was something I had to conquer in order to get through to the door. And then as the ceremonies passed, my attention stayed the same. So it was pretty much five nights of ceremonies, all based off of one long story. And it showed me a lot of love, a lot of passion, a lot of happiness. So at one point, it brought me to this room where I was able to start seeing the intensity of my visions that are being shed and my emotions. So it would be like this silhouette and around it is this black, dark smoke just swirling around it. And the emotion attached to it, you could see it was just stored up trauma and it would pull away and kind of dissipate. And every time it would be almost a slight sense of relief as it dissipated. That happened for a while and then it put me in this position of seeing another silhouette and just raw decayed meat just starts disintegrating off of it. But in this symbol, it was more powerful because it was like just this negative energy, you know, being stored in the body and, and how bad it is for you. They dove into empathy. I've always been mentally strong and been able to conquer and do things that I choose to do. It's a good attribute that I have, but on the same extent, it doesn't allow me to experience empathy towards other people when it comes to psychological effects from their mind. So anxiety, restless leg syndrome, I always thought were created by the mind to deflect you from something. And when people would experience them, I would just be like, oh, it's just your mind. You know, just tell it to go away and it will. You know, I'm able to do it, but it doesn't mean everybody else is. It wasn't until one ceremony where I felt extreme, severe case of anxiety, restless leg syndrome, and nausea all at the same time for a long period of time, which pushed me to the point of giving in and not overanalyzing and using my mind the way that I always do. As soon as I gave in and gave up to the medicine, to the lessons, to my own emotions, um, that's when I went even deeper into the medicine. And it tied back all the way to the first ceremony where it showed me that that beast that was blocking the door was then slave.
perhaps most prevailing myth about ayahuasca is simply that um, the um, all one needs to do to become a better person is drink ayahuasca. That is a um, rather gross oversimplification, which simply isn't true. Uh, it has been demonstrated time and again in people who lack intention or desire to change themselves or change something about their lives, who've taken ayahuasca and uh, gone back into their lives and continued to do and act and live pretty much in the same way as they did before. And there is a corresponding ass assumption that uh, anyone who works with ayahuasca as a curandero or as a, a facilitator is automatically trustworthy and competent simply because they work with ayahuasca. Unfortunately, neither of these assumptions are true. There are risks in working with the sacred plants. The uh, primary risk is in the uh, qualities and characteristics the individual brings to the work itself. Uh, the other risk is in uh, determining the intentions and authenticity and integrity of the person with whom one will do the work in terms of how trustworthy they are, how much do they know, are they capable of dealing with situations that might be um, potentially dangerous or risky to you. When one works with sacred plants, one intentionally and knowingly and willingly becomes vulnerable to uh, influences beyond their own. In fact, ayahuasca, as other sacred plants, induces a light state of hypnosis. And so um, when one takes ayahuasca, one is entering a state of a lowered threshold of suggestibility. And this uh, lowered threshold of suggestibility may be used to the patient's benefit by a curandero, a person of uh, dubious intentions might use that same quality of the plant to take advantage of a person in some way. Uh, all of these things should be considered, and this is not to overemphasize the risks or dangers, but at the same time, it's prudent not to ignore them either. The um, our stories are the re direct result of the globalization and explosion of this whole process and the expanded involvement of people who are ill-prepared and unqualified to be doing it. All that said, if one undertakes this work guided by someone of experience, integrity, knowledge, skill, and a genuine desire to be supportive and helpful, then such people are generally trustworthy and uh, are capable of guiding a person through this process with great success. The um, new wave of dark and foreboding tales of danger and so forth while some of that is true, overwhelmingly it is an exaggeration and uh, doesn't characterize the situation as a whole. I think for me I've had some really good experiences with the ayahuasca. Any um, expectations I had were pretty much blown out of the water, but uh, some that I did have were I was going to go crazy or something because you hear all these horror stories of just things going all wrong. So it was just, all in all, the whole process of the way they do things. On the first night, it was just like a, I don't know, a contents page or something like that. But without really showing me anything, it just made me feel comfortable. And um, there's some sort of feminine aspect to it. But once you take it, it was it's a whole different world. It was it, it just took me down into into myself, into the dark places I have, and was able to just sort of like shred things apart, and made me take layers and layers and layers of armor off stuff that I like. I didn't want to be hurt, or in a sense, I'd become a little bit stone cold. Use of layers that I that I stacked upon my heart and the way that I present feelings in certain situations was able to show it to me in, with, with more clarity so I could, I could see it again. <laughs> Over the last 10 days, I think I've definitely um, opened up something and I think it's more my, my true feelings and how I mask that a lot. For me, it was like I was going through a process that had almost become a wolf in a way. And I was going through it in the first person, but um, I was also seeing it in like it was pictorial from a third person point of view as well. And it was like I was seeing it, but it was 
or like I'd already seen it and it was just replayed back to me in a, in a, in a weird sense so I'd understand from all facets. I was able to not just see it from my side but see it from maybe someone else's point of view. It leaves a fingerprint of that in your memory and you can't really forget it. In, in, in fact, it, it grows and you start to see all these different things that help you understand what you were, let's say, to what you could be. The two principal areas of positive benefit one may realize through work with ayahuasca are in the area of holistic healing and in the area of spiritual development and realization. Often these two processes go hand in hand. And in the uh, concept of holistic healing, obviously that involves healing in all aspects of one's being. And the spiritual realization dimension is not fully realized by everyone who works with ayahuasca, at least to the same degree. People often experience a, a spiritual epiphany of sorts, whether they were previously spiritually inclined or not. The common response is an awakening at some level of one's spiritual consciousness. If nurtured, the usual result or common result is a positive transformation, which leads to better things in people's lives. What led me to ayahuasca about a year ago um, was that I was I was sort of the I was the guy who who had it all together on the surface, um, and it was slowly dawning on me that I didn't have it all together, that I was numb and unhappy and not on the right track for my life. So I came to, to ayahuasca looking for solutions to those problems. My experience with ayahuasca was that it was it was like a defibrillator. It was like, came in and, and zapped me back to life, um, got my heart beating again. It was like I was taken in a, a jet airplane straight past all the, the dancing mice and the firework shows that people talk about to what I would call the great spirit. Um, I think religions have called it God, but that's where it took me. <laughs> very, very quickly, um, no messing around. And I got to experience what it was like <laughs> to have that connection. That was, a, that was a connection I couldn't have possibly imagined. And that's, for me, what this is all about, developing a connection between you and something bigger than you. The whole idea is that there doesn't need to be a hierarchy. Shamanism, in, in its best form, just puts you and it right there. And in its best moments, you merge completely. And then the dichotomy of you and it is gone and there's just the one thing. That's something that you can only experience. There, there are no words. After having this experience, um, I definitely struggled with taking that and putting it back into my day-to-day -day life. And I'd say for me, it took about a year before I'd integrated that. And, and I found that that was where the real work was and also where the real benefits came. But that's an aspect that's sometimes overlooked. Integrating that experience required a shift in lifestyle and a shift in, in the way I was and the way I was in the world that required me to, to change my goals, change my work, change, <laughs> change a lot. <laughs> the, uh, the other thing that, that ayahuasca has been teaching me this time around is, is about choice. And everything, everything is a choice. And we get to, every moment, we get to choose between Really, I look at it as the light side and the dark side, or however you want to conceptualize it, but we can make the world whatever we want it to be with just our choice. And ayahuasca has helped me see both sides to this thing very clearly. And I feel like now I'm in a much more centered position to make the choices that are gonna lead us in the direction that's gonna be positive for myself and for everyone. My only advice would be ayahuasca is not for everyone and that if you have a, if you have a calling to do it, then I suggest you pick up the phone. <laughs>
people. Many people are seeking alternatives to the Western paradigm. I think one of the reasons for that is simply the fact that the Western world has been for some time dissatisfied with its own status quo and with the absence of a meaningful base of reference other than rampant materialism. There's still a good many people whose primary perception of ayahuasca is as a new and novel drug experience as opposed to a holistic medicine. Helping people to form a healthy attitude that is in line with the actual nature of the plant, the nature of the practice, and which recognizes its positive benefits, I think is a very important thing. This is Wambisa. Wambisa. The most powerful of the companion plants. But in many respects, science is kind of catching up with traditional medicine in terms of providing the um, proof, if you will, based on scientific method and evaluation to the satisfaction of the Western mind that this plant and related plants associated with it do indeed have remarkable healing properties that have great potential in service to humanity and in dealing with things that uh, modern conventional pharmaceutical medicine does not address well, if at all. A very important cultural aspect of work with ayahuasca is in bonding. Uh, this has been a, an integral role of ayahuasca in indigenous culture for a long time. That is the uh, effectiveness it has in bringing people together and unifying people and helping people find common cause and common ground and reducing competitiveness, increasing cooperation. What we see in our work with ayahuasca with people coming together for the first time, within 48 hours, no one feels like anyone else is a stranger anymore. Going through the trials and tribulations and stripping away of the barriers to communication. When people leave here, invariably they leave as brothers and sisters. They leave with a sense of love and appreciation for each other. Uh, as I tell everyone from the get-go, when you start here, everyone is, a, everyone is an apprentice and everyone is a maestro. Everyone is a teacher and everyone has something to learn from everyone else. And indeed, that's the way it unfolds. So it's that dynamic exchange in the spirit of giving, in the spirit of sharing, in the spirit of compassion and tolerance for our differences. All of this has a very beneficial, positive influence on virtually everyone who, who does this work, uh, which ideally carries on over into everyone's personal life when they go back home. pretty much hit the ground running when I came back home with life here. Like I had all these incredible experiences at Spirit Quest. You know, I saw all the things that were holding me back and some things I didn't see before. And I guess we continue to do that, right? When we get home, we start reflecting back on our experiences and they keep on, at least for me, just birthing new insights, you know, each ceremony that I kind of go back on. When I got home, I don't know, you see deeper into the day-to-day -day stuff that you usually just kind of took for granted even just simple stuff like work or maintaining friendships or acquaintances just really helped me take everything to another level. And I'm definitely happier. You know, we have all of our stuff. We all have our issues, part of being human. And we get reflections every day in life of, of the things that we struggle with. So yeah, I still have all that stuff, but, the, but it doesn't penetrate as hard as it used to, you know? And ayahuasca and my time at Spirit Quest definitely contributed to that growth. And, Super grateful that I did that. Yeah, when I got back, there was a... Uh hangover for a while you know the ayahuasca hangover where you're just 
in love with everything and ayahuasca was just in my head for a long time just kind of like i don't know i had this feeling like she had a ulterior motive you know like she's trying to get me to to do things that weren't really me and it really affected how i was when i got back in my relationships and it made me much more clear with what I was willing to put up with, so there were some friendships I just let slide. You know, I just wasn't willing to put up with that anymore. I definitely still have a lot of work to do. I'm, my depression is still there, but it's definitely quieted down quite a bit. I have a different relationship with it now. It's much less antagonistic, you know, and I'm a lot more accepting of that situation than I used to be. Life took a very different direction than I expected, and I'm a very different, much more confident person now, but it hasn't been easy, it hasn't always been fun, but I see now, I feel like the whole thing was leading to this point to basically get back to some sort of ground zero where I can relax for the first time in 20 years probably, which wouldn't have been possible had I not, you know, gone down the room. back home I felt I was in a really good place mentally and I think that made me realize that all the problems and the challenges that I faced before didn't bear as much weight as I'd previously given them. Integrating my experience certainly wasn't easy. I went back to the same routine and it wasn't long before I found myself slipping back into old habits and unhealthy mindsets. So to try and eliminate that from happening, I had to change my lifestyle. I changed my diet, I started watching less TV and just found things that were so much more fulfilling to me. Two and a half years on, I still find myself sometimes falling back into those old habits and mindsets, but I'm by far in a much better place than where I was. For me, ayahuasca has helped me gain so much more self-love and more confidence within myself. It's just helped me in so many ways. back from Peru, life here was challenging in the aspects of connections with my friends and people. Life uh, wasn't as deep as it was down there. It was hard to find my place and it was a little challenging just trying to figure out how to belong back into the past before going to Peru. Since going down when I met everybody in this documentary, I've been down three more times and my growth has been amazing. Life has been very happy. My perception has shifted tremendously and ayahuasca has helped me to let go of emotions that caused me to be depressed and on the reason why I went down there. Things unfolded for me in a way that I didn't really know. You know, some of the lessons I'm still learning from my first ayahuasca journey. Every time I'm learning more and it's still integrating now. The way that I think, the way that I am, how I hold myself. Plant medicine, it's challenging, but it's also an absolute blessing. back on my ayahuasca work now, I would say I was quite naive about the integration process. You know, I hoped that drinking ayahuasca would solve all my problems, and I, I quickly found out that was not the case. I quickly found out that it would require work and dedication and sincerity and to, to meet it halfway. In doing so, I realized significant benefits in my life. I can say that I'm a much happier, more well-adjusted, content person for my work. And that's substantial, that's not going anywhere. You know, having, having, having a few years of perspective on it, I would say that my work with ayahuasca 
was, without a doubt, the biggest turning point in my life. This requires work, but it's work that's well worth doing, and there's, there's big benefits to this. There's often no benefit to going back into ceremony too quickly following a good cycle of work until a sufficient amount of integration has occurred. And usually people know when it's time to do it again, if they feel called to do it again, because uh, that integrated process can actually go on for years. I got an email from a guy in Hawaii yesterday. He was here with me 18 years ago telling me how much the medicine is still working in his life and expressing his gratitude for the treatment he received with it 18 years ago, and he's not had ayahuasca since. That gives you an idea of the uh, enduring benefits and qualities that one can realize from it. Mm -hmm.